renting a property in Canada is a gamble. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the Canada Info channel. My name is Wolo. I am a regulated Canadian immigration consultant based in New Brunswick, Canada. I used to be a Manitoban, still a Manitoban, love Manitoba for life. If you are new to this channel, please uh, subscribe and then click on the notification bell. Anytime I talk about immigrating to Canada or life in Canada, you'll be the first to know. And to my old subscribers, a very big thank you for sticking with me on this channel and for being loyal and for watching my videos. Okay, so um, this particular video, I'd already hinted about it in one of my videos. That's the video I did about living in Manitoba. I already mentioned it in that video where I said that we sold our property at a loss. And I want to give the details on what actually happened so that people can learn from our experiences and know the reality of things on ground because not everybody actually talks about um, losses. You know, people want to highlight the good things that are happening in their lives. Uh, not everybody talks about the negative part that actually uh, happens so here i am laying it all bare so that you can learn from our own experience so it's not something that i am very happy about but we have no choice <laughs> uh, given the circumstances you know i just feel that at least you'll learn one or two things from my experience so if you recall in that video i mentioned that we were actually in a small town in a very small location and um that particular location was more or less a temporary um place for us and we had no intention of actually buying a property in that location but there was an issue with that particular location and the issue was that they had a rental housing crisis there were very few houses to rent like no house to rent like when they put a house for rent you see the number of people like who will say they are interested in renting that space so it was a struggle getting a space to rent and we were in an uncomfortable situation that we needed a bigger space and because we just had our baby and we needed space for her to grow we had no choice but to make a decision to buy they had houses to for sale but they didn't have houses for rent so we had no option but to buy and at that point in time my spouse was also getting signals that we were going to leave that particular location. And because we were getting those signals, we were in a tight spot on whether we should buy or whether we should just manage the situation and um, still wait for spaces to rent. But because it was a struggle getting a rental space, we just, you know, at that point in time, we just wanted our comfort. We just could not wait any longer to be comfortable. So we had no option but to go ahead and buy. So after we bought, um, the signals that my spouse was getting concerning moving, we no longer got those signals again. And so we felt we were going to stay there for a long time and build equity. And probably when we leave, we will now sell the space and then get something back out of our investment. But um, almost one year after we bought, my spouse now got the signal that took him out of Manitoba. So you know after he left manitoba i was still there for some time uh, at least two months and then i had to go back to winnipeg to resume work so i left there and then went to winnipeg to resume work so i had to rent a two-bedroom apartment in winnipeg to start work and then the house in that particular location was actually empty our properties were still in the house uh, but it was empty nobody was living inside so this was us paying mortgage in that particular house and then we we're also paying rent in winnipeg so it didn't make any financial sense to keep that house you know the house was actually empty for five months it, it wasn't making any i mean financial sense to keep the house empty for five months while we we're paying rent in winnipeg and then paying mortgage and at that time also the var variable rate was just you know going up and up and up and up those who know <laughs> variable rate or those who understand what variable rate and fixed rate mortgage is you understand what i mean so it wasn't making any financial sense and no and some of you will be asking so why didn't you guys rent it out you know should have rented the, the house out because um it would have been a good um what do you call it now a good rental property considering that that location had rental housing crisis yes the thing about renting a property in canada is that there are professional tenants and there are low quality tenants. Um, there are also high quality tenants as well. So that particular location, I mean, I don't know. It's, for me, I just felt that though there are high quality tenants, you have few of them. 
and you have more of low quality tenants in that particular location but we we're actually lucky to get a high quality tenant but at that time we had already made up our mind that we we're going to sell because we looked at the long-term um cost benefit of leaving that particular property in that location um, it meant that we would either hire a property manager to be overseeing the property which means the property will be paying the property manager to you know monitor how things are in that location but when we looked at the cost of you know hiring a property manager it wasn't making any financial sense because we're not going to be gaining anything out of it at the end of the day and in some cases for those who are unvariable you understand where your mortgage is even higher than how much your tenant is paying you let's say your mortgage is about four thousand dollars meanwhile your tenant is paying you only two thousand five hundred dollars per month you are now even subsidizing for the tenant which does not even make any financial sense and at the same time you're also paying a property manager so when we looked at the long-term benefits we, we also wanted to avoid a situation where um we will not get high quality tenants because like i said in that location the high quality tenants we are very few you have more of low quality tenants who will destroy your property and we didn't want a situation of having low quality tenants or having professional tenants if you don't know what professional tenant is a professional tenant is somebody who has an understanding of what it is to rent a space and know all the legal loopholes such that they will stay in your house but they will not be paying rent and then you'll be the one to be paying the mortgage and take the person to the landlords and tenants but before the landlords and tenant board will now listen to your case before they will now settle your case the person must have lived in your house for one year we mean while you're the one paying all the mortgage and paying all whatever and the person is living in your house for free so this is what a lot of people don't really talk about when it comes to renting properties in canada lots of people are it's it's really a gamble you know renting a property in canada is a gamble especially if you're a landlord for places like toronto or ontario where the market is really saturated it's really a gamble that doesn't mean that it doesn't happen in other places it does happen in other places so when we looked at all these variables um low quality tenant remote location um hiring a property manager where you still have to pay the property manager to look at your house for you and because we're not going to stay in that location and we're not going to be in manitoba um the cost of monitoring your property from a distance is very high because even traveling from winnipeg alone to that particular location is about one thousand canadian dollars on flight like you're taking flight you're paying one thousand canadian dollars in the same manitoba not outside the same manitoba your flight ticket is one thousand canadian dollars except you want to take a bus or you want to drive by yourself which is about eight hours drive you know so when we look at the long-term um variable of keeping that property um as an investment property for a tenant to be renting and all of that <laughs> it's the mathematics was not mathing as in it was not giving us the you know the desire to continue to keep that property so we had to make the painful decision to sell that property remember i mentioned that the property was empty for five months like empty for five months and um we had no choice to sell the property uh although we got a high quality tenant the high quality tenant wanted to stay for just few months you know and then we will now be in a situation of wanting to look for another tenant again which i mean we're like do we stay do we not stay so we just made the decision to sell and cut our losses and move on and we're thinking that when we sell that we will at least get a fraction of our down payment back because we did put a 10 percent down payment um when we were buying the property but sadly we got zero i mean zero nothing nada zilch nine whatever language you want to call zero we got nothing back so our down payments went down the drain all the monies we had paid on mortgage also went down the drain like everything went down the drain even our lawyer the closing like even our lawyer had to ask for more money to you know settle one miscellaneous expense like that that was me even or us even paying additional <laughs> money <laughs> to just sell that property off so yeah i mean we sold that property at a loss and nothing came back to us our down payment went everything just went and nothing came back to us yeah
<laughs> so it's actually wild very wild um so what do we learn from this experience um number one lesson is location 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 if you're going to buy a property and you know you're not going to be staying in that property for long or you're not going to stay in that location for a long time um do not buy a property yeah if you're not going to stay in a location for more than one year or two years don't buy a property i know some people will say oh you can buy and sell and then you i'm just telling you take it from me this is our own experience this is the experience that we had that nothing came back we're thinking that at least a fraction of our down payment will come back because my, my calculation was okay we still have a down payment uh the realtor will take maybe at least half of the down payment and then we'll get half back but nothing came back like nothing by the time they did the, the maths by the time the lawyer did the math and all of that nothing came back I, I wasn't even interested by the time she told me like whoa Lord, nothing is coming back oh, i said ah, blah, blah, no wahala. <laughs> you know so if you're not going to stay in a location for more than one year two years three years five years please do not buy a property um yeah you might be thinking yeah that you get your down payment back but i'm just i just told you our experience that nothing came back so do your maths very well i don't think you'll be able to get anything in return so that's number one lesson number two lesson is that you also look at the location very well if it has high quality tenants you know location that have high quality tenants where you know that if you rent a space um you'll be able to get at least something back then go ahead and buy but if you're in a location where you have low quality tenants that will destroy your property and then you spend money to even repair everything again then it's better not to even buy until you go to a space where you have high quality tenants that's number two lesson so always you know do all these calculations properly very well before you actually you know make up your mind to want to invest in anything rental property or investment property or property for yourself anyone you call it but just do the maths wherever you are do the maths do look at the location um do the variables and then if you're also going to hire a, a property manager you'll be paying a property manager which means that you might not be getting anything until you've built sufficient equity in your investment before you might even want to see that you're breaking even in your investment <laughs> so this is the information i said i was going to share i hope you've learned one or two things from this experience and i hope you don't fall into the same situation like me um and yeah so this is it it's just that a lot of people don't talk about it but <laughs> I feel that if I share this information, somebody will, you know, take a break, take a break and do your maths, do your calculations very well before you do anything concerning investments in property in Canada. So thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye bye. Happy people, the true of all the land of freedom. Here we are from far and wide we stand on God Our home